firstly, starting with you, Keith, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and, and the charity that you represent? Okay. Thanks very much. It's great to be invited and to join you uh, for this very special charity uh, football match. Uh, so my name's Keith McIntosh. I'm the volunteer group leader of two sporting memories groups, one based in Leyland at the Lancashire FA on Thurston Road, the county ground, and the other based at Chorley Football Club, Victory Park. So um, we offer weekly uh, support groups for people living with dementia, loneliness and depression, isolation, etc. And uh, we're looking forward to restarting our physical groups in the very near future. But in the meantime, for the, well, actually, as of our first anniversary is tomorrow, we've undertaken and offered 49 weekly sporting memory sessions on Zoom. I've never heard of Zoom this time last year, but now I'm an expert at it. And it's been a fantastic resource and a great support for our friends, guests and volunteers from the Sporting Memories Group at Leyland and Chorley. Yeah, so that's me. I think Zoom's come a bit too familiar for most of us. Um, <laughs> uh, Dean, coming to you now. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, Dean West um, represents uh, Len John Rose Trust. Uh, myself and Len uh, go back a long way. We played together at Berry and at Burnley. Was a, a great friendship, and we, you know, stayed friends um, when we both finished playing football as well. Which, um, you know, for, for footballers, uh, you know, as a footballer, sometimes it's the ship passing the night and sort of thing like that. Me, me and Len obviously stuck uh, together as friends and such, and obviously uh, kept in touch after football, and we've been friends ever since. Obviously, he, took, he was struck down by uh, M and D. We started the, the Len John Rose Trust, uh, which uh, you know the PFA helped us set up, and myself and Paul Turley. Was, uh, Len's best mate from school uh, back in the day. Um, you know, we we uh, we set up the trust to, to help Len uh, and and, the, and his family. Uh, and obviously, as you know, Len does uh, mega amounts of work for the MND Trust as well. Um, and you know, we work in conjunction with each other. Really, you know, the the, the trust is to benefit Len and his family, uh, and Len does all the the work with uh, MND Trust and you know, raising the profile and raising much needed funds for the for the MND Trust as well. Definitely, I know Len's very much um, at the the front of the fight against MND, which is, is great to see as well. Um, Sharon, coming to you now. Hi, I'm Sharon Crimble, and I'm the Income Generation and Marketing Lead here at East Lancashire Hospice. Um, so East Lancashire Hospice is based in Blackburn, but we cover Blackburn, Darwin, Hindburn and the Ribble Valley. Um, and actually, it's we're here. I think um, I heard somebody say something this morning and it just says exactly what we are. And she was talking about uh, somebody that she knew actually who'd come into a hospice and was frightened of coming in. But uh, when she came into the doors, she was asked why she was scared. And she said, well, I, I, I'm coming in here. If I'm coming in here, I'm coming to die, aren't I? And the, and the lady said to her, no, you're coming in here because we want to help you live. And that's what we do. So, um, you know, everything we do is around our patients. That's, a, that's an amazing thing to say. Um, Emma, can you talk about <laughs> Yeah, so my name's Emma and I work in the community engagement team at St Catherine's Hospice. So we are a local hospice which cares for adults in Chorley, Preston and South Liverpool. And we help people with life shortening conditions and we're also there to support their loved ones and just touching on what Sharon said it what they do at East Lanks our mission um, is to help more local people facing conditions like cancer heart failure respiratory disease and motor neurone disease to have quality of life to the end of life so you've, you've all pretty much summed up there what your charities do so I'll move on to the second question and obviously it's, I think it's a year today that since since Covid's um, caused the, the first lockdown. How important are funds, especially sort of like now with a, a year on since COVID, um, how important are those funds for your individual charities, but also alongside that, especially for Keith and Dean with M&D and uh, dementia and, and that sort of thing? How important is the awareness as well? I'll, I'll start with you, Dean, if that's all right. 
Yeah, awareness is massive, like obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's no secret that you know most most charities and and and, and trusts and things like that have uh, you know not got fallen by the way, by the wayside a little bit. Uh, there's still awareness there because of social media and things like that. But it's just actual events and going out and, and mingling with people that's been the, the biggest thing uh, that's been missed, especially on our part because you know we we tend to organise things around um, obviously ex colleagues for football ex football matches, golf days drinks in the pub and things like that, just get together like that, which which obviously Len loves uh, and we haven't been able to do that, so that's been the biggest thing, and psychologically that's the, the hardest thing uh, because you can raise funds other way uh, you know, by social media and auctioning things off and things like that, but it's just a social aspect that has been, been, been missed really, and obviously seeing Len as well because obviously before lockdown Len was you know, still mobile but obviously now he, he's, he's, he's confined to his wheelchair now, so you know, people will see a big difference in him in, in that year. Do you know what I mean? Although he's been very vocal on, on social media and people have kept in touch with him that way, they haven't actually seen him physically in the flesh. So, uh, you know, it's been a, it's been a big miss in in that, that respect. But Len's a very positive guy. Uh, and we, 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 you know, once the restrictions are lift, we crack on. We've got loads of events, you know, planned and in, in the planning. So, um, and we, we, you know, we fully expect to, to get uh, back into that as soon as things uh, uh, allow. And, you know, we expect that there's there's going to be a hell of a lot of other charities doing that, and it's just going to be a case of you know, you know, not 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 expecting every to come to every single event because there's that many things going on. Uh, things will cross over, but you know we will continue to 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 organise these events and and get things back out there and and, and keep the profile of, of MND and obviously uh, keep lend the public eye as such like and get get people to see him and uh, that's the biggest thing you know get his ex teammates and people who haven't seen him for a long time to to uh, to come down to these events and and see him. Um, Keith, if I can just come to you with, or so you mentioned before, uh, you know you never heard of Zoom a year ago, but it's something that you and your charity have used a lot. How has it COVID like affected you in terms of, you know, money uh, money side of it, but also you know awareness. Um, from a, a fundraising side of it, to be honest with you, that's not my area of involvement. Um, although we do hold uh, annual fundraising events both at Chorley and at, Le- at the Leyland to help to support the day-to-day sort of expenses of running a group because the, our groups are free to attend. And nationally, there's over 130 Sporting Memories Network groups around the, the, the UK, but they are free to attend. Um, so, uh, but that's not my main area of sort of area of, of interest and leadership. But during COVID and lockdown, um, we've, as I've mentioned, been offering weekly Zoom sessions uh, where our friends and guests come in and they sit in alongside the volunteers. And we can have 20, 25, 30 people. We've got guest speakers coming in from various worlds of sport, football, cricket, golf, snooker, etc etc so it's it's not just football it's 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 the wider sporting memories um, approach and um, but one of the other practical ways that we've been supporting our friends and guests the professional calls them service users we don't like that the friends and guests they come along as guests and within a month you're friends and support care and compassion so if you imagine a group of people it's no different from the other support groups for Parkinson's, MND, um, uh, dementia, where they just get together and offer friendship and care, particularly support for the carers, particularly the the wives who bring their husbands along who have played the sports and they've got an interest in it, but to actually then see a group of, 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 of ladies just sat in the corner having a cup of tea and a chat about how they're doing and how they're... And they support each other and they share... And they give advice and guidance. So there's a lot more to it than doing a quiz on sporting pinks. This is one for you, Dean. You'll remember that, spot the ball and all the rest of it. And so as a practical way that we've been supporting our friends and guests, particularly those living in isolation, we've been doing the rounds and dropping these off on a monthly basis and having a chat with them from the front garden gate just to see how they're doing. And just offering a bit of practical care and compassion, a bit of friendship, and that's that's the way that we've been um, complementing our uh, weekly Zoom session. So it's very much based on um, 
on contact through phone calls, budding up our uh, volunteers have been allocated um, people to phone and have a chat with you to see how they're doing. It's the same work that's been done in the hospices and the other community support groups. There's loads of great stuff been going on and, and we're very pleased and proud just to be a part of it. And that's what today and, and you know th this football event's about it's about making people aware about this sort of stuff and knowing that they have access to these kind of things as well and I think you know it's an amazing story that you've just shared with us as well um Sharon with with the hospice um and that sort of thing how, how has COVID kind of affected you guys um well you know we know it's it's affected absolutely everybody and uh like keith and and dean have just said it's um money and events have obviously uh it's been harder to fundraise uh we looked at our accounts at the end of uh, an hour month period and just through fundraising alone we were down six hundred and fifty thousand pounds in an hour month period so it, it's difficult you know because um obviously the, the events had to stop but uh on, in addition to that, as you said, it's keeping the awareness going and to organise something like this. It's not just for fundraising, it's to tell people that we're here. Should they need us, we're here, you can contact us, we're still open. We've had to change the way that we work, we've had to change the way we, we support, but we, we have done that. So just to give you one quick example, our day patients um used to come in groups into the hospice and we knew for a lot of them that's what they look forward to once a week just those you know a few hours in the hospice with uh, a group of people as keith just said they, they become friends uh, obviously that had to stop when we couldn't allow groups in so it was quickly getting uh, people to learn zoom to be shown how to do zoom uh, there's been art classes on there, there's been cookery classes, there's been quizzes and, and they do really look forward to these events and also we, we've been looking at one-to-one -one support in the homes for those that can't do Zoom uh, but still want activities because it might be the only face that we see that week. I think it's, it's amazing because it's like without hearing this kind of thing you don't fully understand everything but I think Pretty much everyone I speak to or know has had a family member who's gone to a hospice for sport. You know, my nan did. I know someone from Tony's family. That's when I spoke to him about it. Um, Emma, I'm just interested to sort of hear how you guys have managed with it because obviously you're two different places, but I'm assuming a lot of the struggles have been quite similar. Yeah, I think like everyone's said, it's been tough for everybody. Um, from a fundraising side, obviously our shops have been closed, our cafe's been closed. We've not been able to host events. Uh, we have been able to do some events online and take them virtually, but I, I don't think it's had the same um, response as an actual like our events program would have had, which um, has been sad. Um, and then from the hospice point of view, right in the earlier days, I think it's it's getting better now. But obviously, everyone's had to adapt back to the PPE, so that's been an additional cost as well. Um, and I think a lot of our nurses, and I've heard a few times, you know, when they've been wearing the masks, not even just been able to smile or communicate the same as they would with the patients, um, or, you know, give them a hug or hold the hand. Um, so I think it's been really challenging for everyone, and especially like, you know, there was a, a time where we weren't allowed visitors. Um, and, you know, we have to put things in place like FaceTime and video call. And it's, it's just really sad, but. I think things are getting better, um, but it has been challenging. Um, and events like this is just, it's so exciting, especially from like a community engagement side, you know, getting the communities back together, getting to meet people and getting that social interaction, which I think a lot of people have been missing. Something Tony said to me is, is that this will be one of the first, well, hopefully one of the first football games that most people will be able to, to come back. and. Uh, you know everyone will be able to go there i'm just keen to stay with you and uh you emma and sharon just for a minute when it's come to the side of sort of you know you mentioned families aren't allowed to you know at one point weren't allowed to come over and mm -hmm. stuff like that. and you're quite in a way you're you're the link between the families and, and that individual um 
how how hard is it for you guys from that aspect? But also, why did you guys want to get into the jobs you're in now? Um, I I, I think from the the patients um not being able to like us not being allowed to have visitors, I think that was just it's like it's like not natural. It was just so hard and so difficult um for people, and I think. You know that's where our family support team did a fantastic job of supporting the families and the patients and being that link um, and trying to make the communication as best as they possibly could and um, we're very lucky at the hospice we um i don't know whether you're familiar with saint catherine's but we've got some fabulous grounds um, and a lot of our patients bedrooms are window facing like on a terrace so we were able you know, to put things in place to to allow um, families to to see their loved ones, um, but like I say, we, it did have its challenges. So, yeah, that was tough, um, and but it just wanted you to make you to try harder. Um, and I think the reason why I got into this job, I actually worked for Preston North End prior to working for St Catherine's Hospice, and I worked in hospitality, and um, I had to put on a charity day and I did it for Rosemere and I enjoyed it so much and I think I got being able to hand the money over at the end what was raised and being told how it would make a difference it just made me feel really valued and like I was like this is what I want to do I want to help people I want to support people I want to make a difference Um, yeah 10 years later I'm still doing and I think I'm really lucky to be able to say I absolutely love my job I love what I do and uh, Sharon, I'm going to come to you in just a second. I just the reason I'm doing this part, I think it's key to highlight why you guys do what you do because I think it gives that personal side of it. You're not just doing it because it's a job. You, you, there's a reason behind it, and I think if people can see that, they can relate to that, and then people are more likely to get involved. Um, Sharon, I'll come to you now if that's all right. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's um, it, it's not just a job and I can only talk uh, you know from what Emma said it sounds exactly the same and you get to know the people because we're based in the hospice especially you get to know the people and the families uh, you know we've got people who've been coming into our daycare for for years um, I think the perception is people come into the hospice just for the last days and some sometimes that does happen but uh, as I said before we're there to sort of support to make the most of life so although you know you have a terminal illness not everybody uh, you know people can live with a terminal illness for for a number of years and you get to know these people and to be honest I have to say sometimes when I've been out um, you know, with raffle tickets and buy a raffle ticket for a pound and people quite rightly can say yes or no. And if they say no, I take it a bit personal because I don't think about it as that pound or what they're winning or the hospice. I don't think of it as the building. I think about, you know, Bill or Anne or, you know, Harry or the person that uh, you're doing it for. So you do it for the people that you get to know. It's not a building it's it's who's in that building and it's and not even in the building because of course we're going into the community as well and and that's what you do it for keith i'm keen to come to you before you were you know showing us kind of the sort of things you were doing with zoom it, it looks like something that you really enjoy doing as well i love it i love it and i'm i'm proud to lead a, a group of volunteers people like myself most of us are all retired and we want to give something back to our local community we've got an interest and background in sport um, and leisure uh, and it's just you know that's your motivation and, and and the ladies have explained it well it's care people matter most and to spend time in the company of people who you know who are living with dementia loneliness depression and you can see they'll come in and it's the highlight of the week some of these old guys who are on their own, they'll get dressed up, jacket, shirt, tie. It's the highlight of the week. And they come and you hold them in sporty venues where some of them used to play, um, you know, the sports and activities. And, um, it, and it works It works great. And um, it's very, very worthwhile. And, um, yeah, really enjoy it and passionate. Before, before I move on, I just want to give a shout I know Emma was on a, a roll there talking about the great work at St Catharines. 
which I've supported and been involved with personally, family-wise, friends and the like. But during lockdown, one of the bonuses has been we've enjoyed afternoon teas and Sunday lunches from their click-and-collect catering service <laughs> from their fantastic restaurant. So good on you, Emma. Can't wait for it to start again and we'll be booking off. It's brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. I'll, I'll feed that back. Yeah, it is. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Sorry. Go on. I've gone off track a bit. <laughs> it's a good news story, isn't it, about how really? people have got round yeah. these uh, challenging times in a positive way you know, encouraging way. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, definitely key to highlight. At the end of the day, it's been a pretty morbid year and to have so much positivity still coming out of it, brilliant. Dean, I've left you the last because for you, I know it's it's personal in a way as to why you're involved with the Len John Rose Trust, but I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, obviously, that's what's before. You know, we're, we're ex ex-colleagues from our playing days but obviously that, that carried on uh, after, after the football you know we, we still kept in touch and we you know we uh, we we you know we got to you know just to say even closer really because you got to know the person better really because you know as we were footballers it was more just, everything was geared around football and things like that but you know we, we became friends after after uh, finishing playing football and had a couple of little small business interests uh, as well together uh, but so you know, it's personal for me, like, you know, as my best mate as from, from football days. Um, and, you know, to see him uh, as he is now uh, is, is, is heartbreaking, really. Uh, so it's, it's it's difficult in that respect. But, you know, got to stay strong for Len and to, to support him um, and just, just be there for him. And, and that's what the, the trust is all about. Just, you know, it, you know, it is about raising funds for, for Len and his family. But along the way, uh, MND which as you know Len will work tirelessly to uh, to, to promote that and, and to raise money for the MND associations that, that are supporting supporting him uh, in his in his everyday life uh, and, and say if Len needs anything um, that the, the, the MND can't or the, the local social services and the, the, the powers that be that give all the help out and equipment and things like that that you can't quite get Cause, you know with some of these organizations Sometimes you'll get 75% some, towards something that you need. So the trust is there to top that up and to, to, to make sure that he gets everything that he needs. And more, if need be, because it's, it's and, you know, the, the football fraternity really does come together as well. You know, when you, you can bring colleagues up that you haven't seen or sport for 20 years, and there will be something in the post uh, the next day to, to help raise funds, because that's just the way football works. You know, you might not have spoken to it for 20 years in football, but... You just suddenly click back into that mode, uh, and it, it brings everything back. It just shows the camaraderie that football uh, does create, uh, in, in you know, and, and carries on beyond football and back into normal life. So, you know, it, it's as I say, there's, there's, there's not just myself. There's, there's the whole football world that we've got links with, uh, you know, that we've played with, that we somebody knows somebody else, and knows somebody else, and and what have you. So we we, we try to tap into all that to to, to promote everything that we're doing. And I'm going to go back to it again. That's what this this day is all about, and that's why it's so important for people to get involved on the day. It's, you know, it's it's going to be great, not just for the charity side. I was speaking to Tony about it, that the organisers the event for the, for the benefit of the listeners. You know, there's going to be a lot of former footballers there, Colin Endrick, Chris Samba. Might even see a uh, mini prompt from Dean West as well if you're lucky. Uh, but there's also going to be a lot of t TV all stars there. You know, from Coronation Street. Emmerdale, Hollyoaks, DIY, SOS as well. Uh, and that's all happening on the 18th of July. And, you know, the money is going to a great cause. And I think this video um, has, has summed it up pretty well as to as to where the money's going. I'll leave a link in the description of the video to, to where you can buy the tickets as well. Um, and also to all the charities, if you want to find out more about them, or if you want to even help and get involved with the, with the, any of the four charities, um, then I'm, I'm sure these guys would appreciate that as well. Ashley, would you mind if I just said a thank you to Tony as well? Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Because obviously he works tirelessly, doesn't he, to put so much time and effort and heart into raising money for the causes that's uh, close to his heart. So I think um, it's we should do a big shout out to, to Tony and to thank him also. I second that. Yeah, I agree. His, his, his commitment and heart for... For, local, for charities, I know he's been doing this in, in various shapes uh, and, and, and forms over the years, but it's what he does and, he, and he's great, he's very highly respected and well connected 
And as Dean said, that's something special about the world of football. Um, and just to let you know, you know, the Sporting Memories connection has come about as a result of Tony inviting Mr Blackburn Rovers, Tony Parks, who some of you may know, but is actually living full on with Alzheimer's and is now in a care home. And uh, our other former professional footballer in Steve Elliott, ex Nottingham Forest, Preston North End, Bolton, um, is uh, is also involved, and uh, it's great. So that's the that's the sporting memories connection. And Tony was um, you know very kind in arranging for for them to be involved and in attendance on the day, and uh, we look forward to taking part just from the sidelines, but supporting a very special event and a great group of uh, charities in yourself. So thanks very much. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's really been fantastic as well. I haven't known Tony for that long, but you know, from, from, from getting involved in events ourselves and being, you know, not being used to organising things like that, and obviously bumped into Tony, say on the circuit, such a you know, charity event, and he, you know, suddenly jumped in and said, right, I can do this, I can do that, I'll help you this, I'll help you that, and it, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a burden off your shoulder, but it's just another pair of hands uh, to help out with everything that, that we do, uh, and say his it, it, connections as well, and and as say, you know just inviting us on, on events where we don't have to actually physically do anything but you know just our presence uh, and you know that the, then they will they'll donate to the charity and you know everybody helps each other and, and everybody wins with it really so you know big shout out to tony for from from us 27 years of experience um that tony's got doing this so it's going to be a top event and an amazing day as well